Psalms chapter 86 a psalm of David bow down thy ear O Lord man is lower than God it's plainly clearly known that God is much higher to us and what he's what he's saying is not saying God bow down to man he's saying God in your highness and in who you are you got to bow down yourself to look upon me. Hear me, for I am poor and needy. And that is what man is. Man is just, in the eyes of God, in the presence of God, God told Moses, You can't see my glory or you'll die. And these people that will come up to you, Well, let me see God. Why? So you can go to hell? Even Israel didn't see God on Exodus 20. God is holy. We are, for all have sinned and come to the shore of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. We are filthy rags. We are sinners. We are wicked. Our righteousness is filthy rags. That's what man is. Had Jesus Christ not come, had God not loved the world, had God not prepared a plan, had God not even bothered with man, we all just die and go to hell. For, you know, man would be eternity just being born and going to hell. Being born and going to hell. You realize the nature of God that he allows the rapture to happen, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ coming, and the earth going away. That, that is a mercy of God that if it wasn't, we just keep on living. And, and imagine what this world would be like like they say the evolutionists imagine this world 1500 million years from now with all the pollution and garbage going on so man is nothing and you get these people you know they're managers they're 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 somebody they're a sports person they're a tv you you're nothing and you're going to stand before that god one day preserve my soul preserve means to keep when you take strawberries or grapes and you preserve them, that's so you can keep them. Because if you take strawberries and you put them on the table, whatever, at least within a month they're going to be new. You take peaches and you put them on the table, and within a couple weeks they're going to be convenient. Flies are going to be buzzing around. Our soul within, the Bible says, was it, uh, at least three, three score and ten years, would be in hell. Our soul needs to be kept by God. And the only way your soul is going to be kept by God is you do what God tells you to do about your soul. You can't run to a church. You can't run to religion. You can't run to your works today and thinking God's going to preserve your soul. Even that rabbi, that, that priest, or that man, or that 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 teacher or whoever says, you know, you'll go to heaven if you do this. To keep your soul is to do what God tells you to do. And verse 1, one thing to keep your soul, verse 1, is you're to be humble. Now, no one is humble that takes the word of God and changes it. I'm going to step out on a limb. I know good preachers and the great preachers that I look up to and I love dearly in the Lord and I'm not saying they're wrong I, I may be wrong but I don't know how anybody can change the Word of God and be saved I don't, I don't know where you get that unless you're just wicked and living in your sins and right there shows changing the Word of God is not a, a, a it's a sign of pride. Those who continue to live in their sins. Never change. If you if you proclaim that on X day that you were you were born again, you were saved by the Lord Jesus Christ, and you never ever changed in your life, you're not saved. 
If you didn't have, now listen, you may not have put the pot down right away. You may not have put the beer down right away. But if you had a hatred for it and you had the way that you wanted to be clean, and if you did not go and witness to people, there's no salvation. Your soul is not preserved. Saying this prayer is not a preserve of the soul. A lot of people that Jesus said himself, didn't we do, didn't we do this, didn't we do this, didn't we do this in your presence? And Jesus said, depart from me, I never knew you. Do you know Jesus and does Jesus know you? For I am holy. I know we're all sinners, but is your soul preserved and are you holy? At one time in a person's life, can he be 100% holy? I don't know how other people are going to think about this teaching. But in my life, I was 100% holy one, in one day in my life. April 21st, 1987, sometime in the afternoon. I don't know what the time was. At that moment... When I asked Christ to save me, when he washed all my sins away, and he did, I was holy. Had I died, I would have gone, go, gone to heaven. Nothing would, have burnt, nothing would have burned up at the judgment seat of Christ, but yet, guess what? I would not receive any crowns. I had not done no work for the Lord, for the love of the Lord. But, guess what? I would have had no ashes, no no sin. Then I got up, and who knows at what moment, you know, I had that maybe dirty thought, maybe lit the cigarette, I was smoking then, maybe, maybe a beer, maybe I was drinking then. I don't know. Then I was a sinner again. I was always a sinner, but there's a time in, in a person's life when he becomes saved. At that moment, he's holy. He's 100%. I believe that. You can be holy and still be a sinner in Christ, sealed by the Holy Spirit. It's the flesh that sins, not your spirit and not your soul. You have had that spiritual circumcision. You can say you are holy, but this stupid outer shell that I have on, that's the mess. You want to talk about the, the, the night of the zombies, this stuff right here. I keep burying it in the grave and putting a shovel, and this stupid thing keeps coming out of the dirt. I chopped it up in all kinds of thousand billion pieces, and it still comes back to sin. But one day, my body's going to be deemed. My body's going to be called up by Jesus Christ, and I'm going to get a new body. Hey, why... If there's nothing wrong with this flesh, why do I, why do I get a new body? Because it's been cursed by sin. Save thy servant that trusts in thee. Now, I don't see any troubles coming up until a little bit after this. But right now, save thy servant. A Old Testament saint did not have the salvation security that we have today, they were not sealed. Unless you did what the law told you to do, and if you didn't do it, then you weren't saved. What happens if you did the whole law and everything like that and you became a leper? What if you murdered somebody? There was no... Animal sacrifice. There was nothing to please God with murder. What if you had an adulterous affair? There was nothing that would have pleased God. You were condemned. The sure mercies and the forgiveness of God that he showed towards David and Solomon. But that was a rarity. That trust is in thee. Who are you trusting in? 
You better be careful. You be very careful. You better watch out because Second Corinthians 11 says there's another Jesus. And in my time of being saved since 1987, as the Lord has guided me with a ministry and wherever he takes me to, I've seen a colored Jesus. I've seen a charismatic Jesus. I've seen a, I've seen a Jesus that's nailed on the cross. I see a Jesus that shows up that's American. I've seen stained glass windows of a black Jesus. That's not the right Jesus. Trust is in thee. Paul says that there's another gospel. What gospel is there? Water. Any thrown at, spit upon, fire hydrant, dipped in a river, sprinkled. I've seen a priest one time use one of those little, little Miss Carol spray bottles that the women use for their hair. Almost knocked me over. I had to. I, I almost lost it. I wanted to ask if I could see it out there, see if it had this Carol thing on it. That's not trusting in thee, God. Some people believe a particular church they're in. That's not it. The God. Hosea said, It is not God. Psalms 86 says, it better be trust in thee, God. The one that has to bow down. The one that has to humble himself to come look at me. Christ had to humble himself to be put in this rousy flesh. And yet he was God 100%. Be merciful unto me. Why do you want mercy? You know... I, I, if I throw a percentage up, well, let me say first of all, Satan 100% won't show you mercy. I know that. In this day and age of 2014 today, I say 90% of man will not show you mercy. You say, well, how can you say that? Human nature and all that. You can't find an employer that will, that will provide enough wages and health care for his employees. I've had to send home and fellow workers, as I was in charge of them, I was, I was a working leader. I had to send some of them home that they pleaded for me for some of the food and establishment so that they can help feed their family. I had to turn them away. And when I asked about, oh, you know, they lied to you, you know, the, the law said blah, 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 blah. And they don't realize I worked for a company like that before, and that used product that did not sell, we would sometimes give it free to American Red Cross and stuff like that. I know in the place I work right now, there are roastery roast chickens that are thrown out or something. I don't know what happens to them. But I have never been offered one. They're not even, they won't even give me a free chicken. One of the guys I work with today when we're at work, it was uh, 6 o'clock. They let us out. The cashier doesn't come to 7. The store doesn't officially open up to 7. And he had a, a soda and potato chip. They made him, they made him stay to 7 o'clock, so he, he paid for it. When we let, you know, the next time he comes to work, made him stay until the cashier show an hour later. What, you don't trust in the guy? You don't trust the guy the next time he comes, he's going to pay? Well, you better wait to God. You better wait to God. You better wait to God gets gets you in front of Him. You better believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior now to, to prevent harsh judgment of the judge that will pronounce judgment against you. Trust it in thee. You better trust in the God of the Bible, Jehovah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And you better not take any of this garbage and junk that Jesus is not God and God is not Jesus. You better get out of that. Be merciful unto me. Mercy is from God. Not Satan and very rarely from man. You can't even rely on a mother with her child for mercy. 
Where do they find some newborn babies? Think about the play. That's not mercy. I know Connecticut. I'm not sure about the rest of it. I know Connecticut has a law that you can, when that baby's born, you can bring it to a certain age to the police station, to the hospital, no questions asked. O oh Lord, for I cry unto thee, God, that's the same theme, verse 2, and that's the God of verse 1, daily. Do you cry unto God every day? Or just when you need something? Is there somebody in your heart every day that you plead to God for their soul? Is there something about God that you say, God, thank you every day? I'm a little lean people can't find something to pray to God about. Gotta be somebody that you can pray for, that you can trust God with. You gotta be something. Daily. And as we go through the Psalms and all that, we're gonna see three times, we're gonna see seven times a day. But right now we're just dealing with daily. Every day have you prayed to God about something? Rejoice the soul of thy servant. So your soul can be rejoiced. You know there are churches out there that your soul is rejoiced by the music they play? And it's a wicked abomination before God? Do you know the soul in some churches that you can go to? The man that's going to be behind the pulpit, the special preacher, whatever you want to call it. He's going to refresh the soul and God's like, Ugh. Make me sick. Rejoice, rejoice the soul. If you, if you rejoice in the soul with God over prayer, have you just been so happy sometimes in your prayer life or reading in the Bible? Has, has God worked in you and you're reading through your Bible privately and God shows you something and you run over here or you get a concordance and you run the notes and stuff like that? Like, wow! Thank you, Lord. And then you find out in five, six years you're still faithful in the Lord. And you and you look at all the notes in your Bible that the Lord showed you. Or a notebook that you carry. You got that thrill? For unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Do you give your soul God in praise? You know, there, there's a there's a guy out there that jokes about and the, and the thing about you know the, the the handshaking and stuff like that. That's a bunch of phony. That's for people to see you. What about what about you just giving your soul to God? No one can see it. No one can see your soul. Do you lift it up to God? Praising God. For thou, God, Lord, art good. I was trying to think what the rich running ruler said to Jesus. I think I think Jesus said, There is none good but God. Oh, they run to that verse. Oh, oh, oh see, Jesus is not God. Yeah, but Jesus is in the flesh. This is not good. <laughs> it's flesh. Man is not good, for there is none good. And ready to forgive. I don't care if you're a lost man. I don't care what your wicked sin is, how wicked you think it is. God is ready to forgive you. God is long-suffering to forgive you. God has opportunity. God has not called the rapture yet because he wants you to be saved. Christian, God is ready to forgive your sins that you have done in your backsliding. And plenty is, that's a lot, in mercy. God never runs out of mercy. Wait till we get eternity when he shows you all the mercy that we're going to get. Mercy, we're never going to have a headache. Mercy, we're never going to have pain. Mercy that after Revelation 21, we're never going to have tears. Mercy that we're ever before his throne. Why? Because of the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ.
plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. You ever ask God for mercy? Pain, suffering, sorrow? Paul did. God said, no, I'll give you enough grace and mercy to deal with your thorn in the flesh. And I'm not going to get rid of it. Well, the Lord hadn't got rid of my pain. Did you ask the Lord, say, listen, this is one of my prayers. Help me to deal with it. Lord, that you know how much I can handle. And I, listen, don't pray that God don't break me. No, no, God's not going to, according to, I think it's 1 Corinthians. Well, Lord, can you help me in the flesh to tolerate? You are to call upon God with mercy. And you're going to need it, because life is not always good. Give ear, O Lord, listen to me, unto my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. Listen, Lord, please, hear me. In the day of my in the day of my trouble, I will call upon the pastor. I will call the credit company. I will call my mother. I will call my father. I'll go to the boss for a, for a, a, a advance in pay. I'll run down to one of those those places to get advancement in my paycheck. I'll just pick up the phone, and call anybody. What what's that, what's that, that help number something one one whatever it is. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, God. And give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplication. And then sometimes you think God, God heard you. But you don't think God did hear you. God hears all our prayers. Some of them he's not going to be too quick to answer. I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. God will give you the answer. You want the three answers? I got them. And you don't have to buy any of my books. You don't even have to buy this tape. Well, it's not a tape, it's a video. It's free. I'll give you the three answers God will give you. And there are people out there who say, I, I, I'm a liar. Name it, claim it. No, that's not, that's not an answer. Number one, yes, God will answer. Number two, God will answer by no. And number three, God will answer not now. That's the three ways God answers prayer. And a lot of us don't like to know. Yes is always is not always going to be helpful. And yet and yes to your answered prayer may be deadly or may be perverted for you or the people around you. And not now means you're not mature enough. It is not the time. It is not in God's time frame. Among the gods. Isn't this great? This is a holy Bible. This is the word of God and the Holy Spirit records that there are gods. Yes. Small g-o-d-s. There are gods out there. And there are some stores where you can go where they sell statues and you can walk in there and find many of them and there's a lot many more that are not even in that place. You can walk in these churches and see all the gods. You do a search on the internet, G O D S, and you'll see see what comes up. Among the gods, there is none like unto thee. God is better than all the Greek mythology gods. God is better than all the Roman mythology gods. God is better than all the Roman Catholic angel gods. You say, oh, they're not God, they're angels. You worship them, you make it a God. 
God is better than all the motor vehicles in the world. Well, that's not a God. Oh, yes, it is. There's a lot of people who go out there, wax it, clean it, check its oil, put all their money into it. Drive around and around and around and around and waste gas and fill it all back up. Motorcycles. Is a god. Their job is a god. All kinds of gods. Oh Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. Everything that God has done has been, and I don't, when I mean completed, means I, 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 like Jesus is like, that hasn't been done. But everything has been completed in God. You can't fix the moon. God already knows when the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come. He knows the time and hour. We, there's no need to fix it. God has already prepared New Jerusalem, it's fixed. Who can do any better? Science is, is trying to, oh, we're going to make you live longer and stuff like that, and you can't afford it. And there's a time in the Bible where it says man is going to live without death, and they're going to want death. <laughs> Isn't that a complete reaction opposite? I wonder if Obamacare will turn him away from the emergency room. God does all the great works. No God can All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee. At the, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. America present is going to stand before God and have to bow down. And say, Lord, I'm sorry for what we did in our public schools. I'm sorry what we did in our public libraries. I'm sorry what we did in our courtroom. I'm sorry that we took your name and your word out. You are Jesus Christ. You are the Lord. Congress, Senate, Supreme Courts, past, present, future, ACLU, all the legal bar systems, all the judges, all the police departments, all the public school teachers, everybody will worship thee. I don't care if you don't believe in God. The Bible says you're a fool. You will stand before the God you don't believe. You will stand before the God that you rejected out of your nation. Belshazzar and his entire government is going to show up before God one day. And he saw the handwriting on the wall. And shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and doest wondrous things. And he does. Egypt. He's got a lot of birds to feed out there. You notice that? Got a lot of fishies. He's got to get the, the fish food and shake it over the ocean, I guess. You know, when we were by the river today, I know, I think I've heard they caught catfish out of there. I believe so. We never saw a catfish, but God knows how many whiskers are on them. God knew where the dolphins were, even though they weren't there. They might have been there, and we didn't even see them. There may have been manatees. God knew where they were. I don't know how he does it, but God's got all the little legs on the ant counting in Florida. I can't even count the ones on the kitchen counter. And they got this little trail so that other ants can find them. Listen, in, in Tom Sawyer, they all went into the cave and two didn't come out. How do they do that? How does an ant know? God. That's a wonderful God. A bee is zip flying through the field. He finds a whole field of sunflowers on that. Man, he's in paradise. He's in heaven. How does he know where to go back home? Can't leave no scent trail. That's the wonderful works of God. The wonderful works of God is the earth is right where it is and remains where it is. Or if we went a little closer to the sun, we'd be all nuclear. If we went a little bit further from the sun, just a little bit, we'd be all frozen. 
That's a wonderful work of God. All the planetary systems, the nine planets in the system are eight. You want to count Pluto or not? And they keep on going the way they've been going. That's a wonderful work of God. Thou art God alone. There's no other God. Some throw a woman up there. She's not. Teach me. Now, if you run to John 14, 26, Jesus said that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit shall teach you all things. Not your preacher. Not your Sunday school teacher. They are just vessels the Holy Spirit uses. But teach me. He's saying the Holy Spirit, come on. Oh Lord, I walk, I will walk in thy truth. So let me ask you a question. This is a Psalm of David, right? Do you think David every year brought out his Easter asterisk statue and colored eggs for all the little kitties to make them happy and all that? Solomon here, you know, here's your little Easter basket. You think David did that? You think David went out and and told his men, say, hey, go out there, get me a, get me an evergreen tree, bring it in here. And come on, Bathsheba, all my honeys. Let's decorate the tree. Hmm? You think David did that? Those were around long, bleh, those were around long before David. You know, Nimrod was the first Christmas. The the, the, the the child in there, I can't think of the mother's name. Thou art God alone. I'll worship him alone. You think David had little Cupid around February 14th? You think David had the nonsense that's in the nonsense churches today? Who the Lord loved and, and, and gave him a special blessing after he, he murdered a guy and had committed adultery? Do you think God would have been pleased with him if he was involved in the nonsense that's in the churches? Teach me thy way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart. To fear thy name. How about that? Unite. Make one. For what? To fear the name of God. To do right. To please God. You know why you sin? You know why you break the first commandment and sin? Because you don't put God, I don't put God first in my life. If I really believed Jesus was coming, I wouldn't be sinning because I... He, he may come when I sin. I will praise thee, O Lord, my God, with all my heart. So I'm going to come up with a record album or CD that, and MP3s and all that other stuff, singing songs about Jesus. Would you like to buy my poster so you can put in your door's room for two ninety five, whatever they charge today? Well, I'm praising God. And when I step out of the studio, I light me up a Marlboro or something. Praising God. When you when you got hymns in your, in your church or songs and have nothing to do with nothing but about yourself. When the messages that was this last weekend full of lilies and, and you know, flowers and bumblebees and all that and had nothing to do with Jesus. That's not praising thee, God. That's pleasing those who come twice a year and get their money. I will glorify thy name forever. Really. I got one guy mad at me. It's like, name me the apostles. Name me the 12 tribes of Israel. Well, who's the star quarterback starting the next game? Name. You can know the names of the people in the movie. 
I wonder if that Noah movie, I wonder if the names of the, of the characters were right. <laughs> I wonder if they gave Mrs. Noah a name. Hey, Joan, come here. You want to grab that chicken? He's on one getting the boat. Ham, get off that rye. We gotta put it in the boat. Name. Let me ask you a question, Christian. This is Tuesday. Sunday starts off the week. So I'm gonna give you a break, which is was Friday. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. What name did you mention more? In Jesus Christ that God recorded. Whether real or fictional. How many names have you read in the Bible reading since Sunday? How many names did you read in the newspaper? <laughs> How many names did you read in TV Guide? How many names have you read for your, your, your magazine? Or your book? Every name that you read or pronounce with your lips or you hear, God is recording. And I wonder how many times, how many names are above Jesus Christ? A name that's above all names. Take that one and put it on the judgment seat of Christ and see how well you come out. I'm a good Christian. And Jesus Christ's name has had, has had the predominance in your life. Really? I guarantee 100% of Christians, Christians are going to fail at that one. We let too many other names come before Jesus. Especially, you know what media has done? You know what computers have done? You know what the, the, the great electronic age we have done? It has put more names in front of you than Jesus Christ. For great is thy mercy toward me. All right, not only do you ask for mercy, but do you acknowledge the people that God is merciful to you? And knowing it is great mercy, thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. And if your Bible says Shiloh, maybe they're air conditioning the place where they're going. I think the Holy Spirit knows how to spell the place that he made. You know, he is God and God made hell. The devil and his angels. Do you know, we're not going to go into big detail, this is a chapter study, do you know hell has different degrees? A man that is in the rainforest or in a desert who had really no little knowledge of God but just would not obey the light that God showed him will not suffer, he'll suffer in hell, Luke 16, but he will not suffer as much as a pope who has damned people's souls. Jesus gives a warning about the children, it's better for a millstone to be hanging about your neck. Listen, people that allow children to go to hell, vacation Bible, are going to get greater and Damnable her uh, damnation than, a, than an elderly woman who just would not believe Jesus Christ all her life and go into hell. What kind of hell would Adolf Hitler get? Have God put a whole bunch of unsaved Jews around him? How about how about this? How about this? How about this? How about every Jew that that Hitler killed? He puts them in, in Adolf Hitler's company all for eternity. How would you like that one? 
How about it? Hell, if you're a, if you're a religious leader and the people that followed you sit there and point fingers at you for all eternity. There are different degrees uh, degrees of suffering in hell. Satan gets the worst. As everybody in the congregation of hell looks at him and point their fingers at him and cuss him out. As he sits there and laughs and enjoys. I think Ezekiel says so. He doesn't suffer alone. I think it is. Oh God. The proud are risen against me. Pride will bring somebody against you. Well, we're just Baptist Christians, and you got pride because you're against what we do. You're too ashamed to go out and do what we do. You're too ashamed to go out and knock on door. You're too ashamed. So you hide under the gospel light. I let my light shine. And the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul. You know, the Roman Catholic Church could, if Muslims could, if, the, if you were to get rid of that, that piece of paper called the Constitution, if you were to get rid of the laws in the Supreme Court, then two groups of people will come in here and kill us and torture us to our dead. I wonder how many people have heard me preach on the street and wasn't for outside the law would like to have done something to me, grab me and take me away. Or maybe shoot me. All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Remember, we have stuff that happens to us, but there's a lot of stuff that people are thinking about. You imagine how many phone calls the police department gets every week when we're down there? We were mentioned on the radio station. And they lied about, you know, telling me I'm going to go to hell. No, I didn't say that. But people called the radio station and mentioned us. How about that? And we didn't even know that someone told me. You need to pray for Brother Knox's church and all the people. Listen, all the people we see come out Saturday, that's the tip of the iceberg. He is all around Florida. He is active, and he and his church members that need prayer. Listen, he was taken to court and all that. and, and Well, not court, but he was taken to the city council, whatever you want to call it, about being on the street corner for a business. Let me ask you a question, Mr. Christian, Mrs. Christian. If it was given liberty in this country for the for the churches, I'm talking about the Catholics and the and the uh, uh, Islam, maybe the morons, maybe the Jehovah Witnesses too. If they were given freedom to persecute, would they be the first to come pounding on your door? What do they say? If they if they can convict you convict you as a Christian, would there be enough evidence? And they will call in your TV viewing, what programs you watch, and the videos that you do. You know, when you swipe your credit card from that machine outside Walmart to get your video, it's recorded what you get. I got way off on that one. But the Lord does that. And have not set thee before them. Wicked men don't. The Roman Catholic Church all their years said we did it in the name of God. They didn't care about God. They didn't do it in the name of God. They did it in the name of Lucifer, Satan, devil. But thou God, O Lord, art a God full of compassion. That is completely opposite of Satan and his religion. There have been widows in the church that I can't afford to pay for my husband to get out of purgatory. Oh, that's tough then. Let him suffer.
There is medical thing going on in America today, right now, that people need serious medical. You ain't got, you ain't got money. You ain't got insurance. Suffer. There are people I know personally that need a dentist. You ain't got money. You ain't got insurance. Get out of here. There's a church out there that goes, oh, if you don't belong to them, you're anathanized. You'll never go to heaven because you're not part of them. And then when Peter stands at the gate and you don't show your Roman Catholic thing on your on your head, your Ash Wednesday uh, 666, you go off into a devil's hell. There's no compassion. That ain't love. Just because you're not part of us. That's a click. And gracious, again, long-suffering. God is, and Peter says he's long-suffering that the rapture hasn't happened so that people will be saved. And plenty is in mercy and truth. Again, those are, we just we already mentioned that. Oh, turn unto me and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant. Get God's strength and you can do all things. Now, I'm not quote. I'm not saying that verse going to Philippians. I just... That's not how it should have came out. Read Fox's Book of Mormon and see how people did all things through Christ's strength in them. Through God's strength. I read that I read that book or listened to that book being read to me and I cringed. Man, I don't know how I would react. And I don't know if I would sing hymns if I was burning on the stake and the wind blow the fire away from me to make me suffer more. I'm a wimp when it comes to pain. I hate pain. I avoid pain. But if you had the strength of God, I guess you'd go through it. If I go in God's strength and God loves me and I keep fellowship with God, you better watch out. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah, listen, Babylon was destroyed in one, one night. We may be sleeping tonight and they may come in and drag us out now. Even right now during this Bible study. They may drag us out. If I go in God's strength, I'm in fellowship with God right now and I got a prayer life right now and I read my Bible right now, God is going to give me more strength than a Christian that doesn't fellowship with God. And where I think that, I ain't, where I'm sitting in that jail cell and they say tomorrow morning we're going to put you on the rack, we're going to pull your fingernails out, we're going to cut open your sides, we're going to feed your insides to pigs tomorrow, and I can sit in jail and sleep. Or sing praises to God. And some of you out there don't even know what I just said. Now, I'm not going to mention his name. Because some Catholics may be watching the honor. But there was a man in the Bible. That the, that the angel had to smack him to wake him up. And he was going to die. At least the next morning. That's the strength of God. When you're suffering and you're in pain and you pray to God and you're in your Bible, you're doing right, and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm in a lot of pain, but God must be getting me through it. Don't you don't you say those pills. Don't you say that that cryopatra. God. When I work all night and my back should be broken, my, my feet should, I should be on the floor like jello. I get out of work and I say, Lord, thank you for getting me through that night. I don't know how you did it. There were a couple times I was in so much pain, I just wanted to walk out and quit. But you gave me the strength. When you got faithful pastors, I'll say his name, Pastor Knox, that don't want to quit, wants to keep on going, wants to do what the Lord wants them to do, and you got all these churches around here that are failures. Pray for strength for Brother Knox and to keep doing right. Because you know Satan is attacking him to do wrong, to give up. Strength for God is not giving up. And the Bible says over there in Proverbs, if you give up, and I'm not quoting this verse correctly, 
For if you give up, thy faith is small. Went a little bit over on that one. This is a good one. And say the son of thy handmaid. What's David saying there? You want to care to guess? David had a mother that served God. She didn't just serve God. She was God's handmaid. And you know why America today is a failure? Because you women that are mothers, you are... Oh, can you say it? You can't do nothing. The filthy women that we, we saw today down at the river. Filthy mouth. Filthy dress. Probably never set a foot in the church. Probably couldn't find Genesis without a, 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 a index or tabs. David said his mother was thine, God, handmaid. Show me a token for good. Now, they're like, God, Jews require a sign. That is how they started in Exodus with Moses. You may ask, God may give you a token. He's not obligated. That they which hate me may see it. Oh. Okay, I see this verse now. God, let them see me for a testimony of what you're doing in my life. What do you mean by that? I'll tell you of a poor testimony. Hey, guys, come here. I heard this joke. And it's filthy. Oh, uh, you know, everybody, this, I gotta go to church Sunday. Yeah, I gotta go home to that old lady. Rotten kids of mine. Church, I I go to church when I feel like it. Uh, the bass are biting this weekend. All right, I'll get the boat out Sunday. For a token is for good, man. That guy is just weird. That guy goes to church three times a week. He's got bumper stickers all over his car. I didn't want to. I don't know. Ask for a ride for him, but. And then you get in his car, he's listening to religious things, and, and he doesn't, when he, when he bangs his hand, he didn't cuss. Whew, that guy's a fruitcake. That's a testimony to God. And be ashamed. Where would you be ashamed? They would be ashamed at the great white throne judgment. There's a guy I think about that rides around all the time. He's going to be ashamed. That guy has seen our signs and seen us I don't know how many times. Now granted, we were sick at one time. We could have been there. Other times, maybe weather. But pretty much we've been faithful. And so has he. But we're faithful to Jesus Christ. What is he faithful to? Shell, uh, Sunoco, or whoever he burns gas. Because thou, Lord, has hope in me. It's taking care of me. It's giving me help. And comforting me. Isn't that, isn't that what Jesus said in John 14 about the Holy Spirit? And when Christians say, oh, I don't feel comfort. I, I feel, my life is out of whack. You need to get back to God. You need to get back to Jesus. You need to turn around and repent and get right. This is a prayer of David's song. 
There is much me. Listen, I could probably go weeks and months on this verse if we were to really break it down. I know I can. <laughs> but is God your all in all? Or is he your half and half? The Bible says you can't serve God and man. The hardest thing we, we, we looked at tonight is does Jesus Christ have the predominance of all the names that have ever been in your life? Of who you know? You see people all the time, and I said something to the guys last night, everybody's on a cell phone. How many times are you on a prayer phone? If God were to give you a bill for all the times that you were in prayer and charge you for minutes, would you be like, that's no problem, here you go. Or would you be fabricating what the bill was? Would you, even have to, would you have to pray to God to pay for the bill? Or, here's, some, here's, here's my two mites. I don't know. 